before I start, I am going to introduce myself. Hi, Lauren Taylor. It's a pen name for my author stuff, but that's what I go by on the internet. I am working on a novel that will hopefully come out in early to mid 2024, still deciding. It's a whole thing. But aside from that, I am also a book lover, hence the purpose of this video. I go to school near a bookstore and it's very dangerous to have a bookstore near a college where creative writing students attend. Just saying. I mean, it's great for the bookstore. They've probably made a lot of money off of me and my friends, but the point still stands. It's great. I got a lot of books um, that I'm going to get to read over the summer. And this is not only a book haul, but I guess a TBR for the summer. I'm not the kind of person who is particularly picky when it comes to like, you know, summer's when I read romance and winter's when I read fantasy. I mean, I've tried to do that in the past, but I'm a mood reader and sometimes I feel like reading fantasy and it's 30 degrees outside. 30 degrees Celsius, I feel like I should uh, point that out for my American <laughs> viewers. Um, but anyways, let's just get into it. First off on the list, we have Iron Widow. I do not want to butcher this. Ugh, I feel bad when I pronounce people's names wrong. So this is Iron Widow. The reason why I ended up getting this book is because the author made a video about how originally when she got the book deal for this book, the advance was what, like $14,000, which is not a livable wage. Um, and I found that to be just a little ridiculous considering the plot of this book, sci-fi sci reimagining of China's only female emperor. And I thought that was really cool. And I'm like, how could you not think that would sell well? Because that's what she said. Their response was to only giving her $14,000 as an advance for a novel. And I get it. Debut authors don't typically get big advances in the first place, but like, it's a little ridiculous. This isn't a recent purchase, but it's pertinent to like, you know, my TBR, uh, is Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I have almost finished the love hypothesis, which I've had, that I've had in my possession for over a year, and I literally just started it like a couple weeks ago. And I figured why not do an Allie Hazelwood reading vlog? So I'm in the middle of filming that. Uh, but because again, I'm in school, I'm in the middle of finals, lots of assignments, no exams. It's a little, it's taken a while to get through the love hypothesis. Not because it's bad, it's just because I have a lot going on. But once I'm done that, I'm gonna get onto the love on the brain. And then after love on the brain, I have Loathe to Love You, which is a collection of short stories. I'm excited for that. Obviously, I do love Allie Hazelwood's writing. It's very, it's very funny. I love her prose in that sense. Like she, she knows how to write a good dynamic between the main character and the love interest. So there's that. And then of course, I have A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Maas. If you don't know the plot of this series, I go on TikTok and just search hashtag Aka War or not Aka War hashtag Akamaf or Sarah J Mass and you'll figure it out. Um, but I've been listening to the audiobooks, um, the graphic audios that have the very like theatric kind of feel to them because they have the sound effects, uh, different voice actors for every character and it's just it's so good. So I do recommend if you're going to read this series uh, especially the first book, reading it with the audiobook is such a different experience and it's amazing. And personally, I found it a lot easier to do the reread because I do find it generally difficult to do rereads no matter how much I like a book. It's just, it was just a lot easier with the audiobooks and especially when you get to the second book. Next up, we have Monsters Born and Made by Tong V. Burwa. Uh, this book is about a girl whose family is hunting these monsters for a competition but then one year they manage to not catch any monsters and therefore their family doesn't make any money that year and you know it's a whole thing uh, but that's all i know so far especially with fantasy these days i try not to learn too much about the book before i go into it i just want like a basic like oh these are the sort of buzzwords the plot points like very minimum outline of like what this book is going to be about because then I find I enjoy it a lot more that way. Impossible to Forget by Imogen Clark. I got this book through a blind date with a book situation at an independent bookstore near where I live. I don't really remember what this book is about. I think a girl, uh, her mother has recently died. The mother has left letters to her friends um, on basically how to raise her daughter because she's entrusted the care of her daughter to the friends basically 
I think this will be really interesting. Great for a summer read if you're going based on the whole like, oh, uh, contemporary, uh, this isn't really a romance, I think, but like that kind of vibe. It'll be a fun thing. Uh, Ariadne, this is a Greek mythology based book. This is one that I'm saving for another video that I plan on doing where I read mostly, if not only, Greek mythology for a week. She's the princess of Crete um, and she's being held captive, kind of like a Rapunzel situation where she's being held captive in this castle. Her brother is kind of like captive there and then someone breaks her out, assuming the love interest. Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. This book was on sale. And these days with the price of paperbacks going up, like regular price, this book is $22 for a paperback. That is absolutely insane. So the fact that it was on sale for 15, I was like, I have to get this. Uh, the sale won't last forever. That's why I got that. It's a romance. I don't exactly remember what it was about. I know there's a winery involved. Uh, I got She Gets the Girl by Rachel Lippincott and Allison Derrick. These are the writers of Five Feet Apart, which I didn't read that one. Uh, but this is a sapphic romance, so I think the main characters are in college. So, you know, always up for queer representation. Uh, it helps when you're queer yourself. But I'm really excited to get to this. I haven't read many contemporary romances that have two female leads. At least I haven't in a while. Now we got Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. God, this cover is so pretty. Ooh, okay. So this book I haven't taken out of the packaging. I'm just, I don't want to do that until I actually go to read it. But I have the Atlas Six by Olive Blake. I swear every time I say her name or think it, I'm like, Olivia, Olivia. It's Olive. Uh, I think this is a sort of dark academia. Secret societies are involved. Six characters um and they become a part of the alexandrian society i guess that's on the back of the book otherwise i don't actually really know too much about the plot i think they go to paris so next we got a bit of an unboxing to do i did my best to cover the address so hopefully that worked but i'm gonna try and open it this way this won't come as a surprise but it's the Ooh, that's a little dented oh well we have the second book in the Atlas 6 series. I knew I wanted the Indigo Exclusive Edition because it's really pretty. Um, and I figured if I like these books, cool. If not, I'll give them to someone who does. So I haven't read the synopsis for this, obviously, because um, I haven't read the first book yet and I don't want to get spoiled. This is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. This is about a woman, a chemist, who ends up on a baking show in the 60s and is like trying to teach women um how to bake using well chemistry because baking is pretty much just chemistry oh there's a bookmark sweet i'm really interested to see where the author goes with this i've heard nothing but great things about this book and i'm told it has very feminist feministy vibes because it's a woman as a scientist in the 60s so you know there's going to be some problems that come with that being a woman in stem in the first place and then also being a woman in stem in the 60s that's just oh god um <laughs> But I'm really excited to read this book, as I have said with literally every other book on this. Blood Like Fate, it's a signed copy. The author is from Etobicoke, I think, and that's where I live. I managed to get a signed copy. So this is the sequel to Blood Like Magic. I'm gonna get to that. I haven't finished the first book yet, actually, but I will this summer. It's on my TBR, just as the rest of these books are. We have Gods of jade and shadow this is based off of mexican folklore i think so i'm just gonna rapid fire these next few books because they're all by the same author uh but i have daisy jones and the six uh carrie soto is back the seven husbands of evelyn hugo i've had this book for a while we also have malibu rising also by taylor jenkins reed we have moon of the crusted snow by wabeshig rice uh indigenous author from canada i got this book from my school we have Stone Maidens by Loy Devereaux Richard, or Richard, sorry. The daughter of this writer posted a video on TikTok talking about how her dad took 14 years to write this book because of, you know, he had kids, he was a lawyer, he had a whole other life, but he took the time to write this book. 
And for the longest time, I think this book wasn't getting many sales because it's independently published. That's just how things go. But the video on TikTok blew up and I, I love supporting indie authors. Love, love, love it. So I started reading this book last night actually and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. Fun times. Uh, not quite a murder mystery or a thriller. Um, it comes off a lot more humorous than most thrillers do in my opinion uh, but it's about a girl whose sister gets murdered and she wants to kill the murderer as many probably would in that situation and she makes some friends along the way and then we have the books from my latest book of the month box for April and like I said I have the original cover of Daisy Jones in the sixth because I figured why not? It's available. And then we have Anna Maria and the Fox. It's about a Mexican woman who goes to England and falls in love uh, with a rich guy. Next book is Circe. This is one of their backlist titles and so is Daisy Jones. Daisy Jones is the 2019 book of the year from book of the month. So definitely a backlist title. And then so is this. This is the book of the year from 2018. I didn't realize uh, up until I started subscribing to book of the month uh, when it became available in Canada how long this service has been around. It's been around for like 100 years almost I think. Um, they've been doing this for a while. Uh, by the way not affiliated with book of the month in any way shape or form as of the time that I'm filming this video. Um, no no sponsorship no money involved whatsoever. I just really like this service so I do highly recommend. A little more rapid fire. We have Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow. It's about some friends who make a video game, I think, and it spans over the course of a long time, like ooh, 20 years or so, almost knocked that stack over. So I'm just gonna start putting these back over here. Um, then we have Legends and Lattes, Cozy Fantasy. If you hear people talking about Cozy Fantasy, this is what they're talking about. It's about an orc that ends up opening a coffee shop in a village because she's retired from, you know, the battle life. So fun times. The amount of times I say fun times because I don't know what else to say when I'm done talking about a book is just absolutely atrocious. But next up we have Hester. This takes place in 1800s uh, Salem but I don't remember the plot. I think it's about a woman who recently immigrates uh, to Salem from Scotland with her husband but he goes off to war and she starts um messing with somebody else and takes up some magic i think because they're in salem so it makes sense we also have miss peregrine's home for peculiar children i got this from uh, a little library which is like the little boxes people put up outside their houses and you exchange books through that so ideally you take a book and you leave one at some point um, so some of these books, maybe not the ones I just showed you, but some of the books I have around that I know I'm probably not going to get to for a while or have already read and think someone else would enjoy, I'll probably end up donating some books back. We have The Lost Apothecary. This is the first book I ever got in a book of the month box. Um, and I'm still reading it. I haven't like DNF'd this or anything. Um, but at the time I started reading it, it just wasn't... Uh, for me but I do want to finish it and give it a chance because I did like the plot the characters were great I just at the time I was reading it just wasn't hitting the spot it needed to but I'm excited to pick this up again and see where it goes then we have The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller I got this at Value Village uh for pretty cheap like six dollars I've read some of her books in the past and I really like them and I figured why not pick this up and then we have A Thousand Heartbeats by Kira Cass. This is a thick one, especially for a YA romance, but it's technically a, it's not like cozy fantasy, but it's there. It's kind of in that realm, um, but I'm told it's still kind of high stakes. Uh, so I'm really excited because Kira Cass is one of those authors that I started reading when I got into um, booktube and stuff like years ago. Like I've been on booktube and watching it for so long um i've tried and failed to make a booktube channel so many times at this point it's unreal but i'm excited to get to this book of course and yeah uh, i think it's about 
two kingdoms they're at war and you know the princess of one starts to fall for the prince of the other and you know they're supposed to hate each other but they shouldn't so it's kind of like enemies to lovers fun times i gotta put that on a shirt or so yeah because that's another one of my transition phases if you will it's so yeah fun times like anyway um i think that is everything surprisingly without further ado i'm gonna end this video now so make sure to like subscribe and to do whatever the hell you want in life make sure to click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified anytime that i post hope you have a great day and your night whenever you're watching this and i will see you guys next time i post a video which who knows at this point uh, but by the time this video is posted my semester should already be done and over with so i'll hopefully be able to post a lot more in the summer break so yeah i'll talk to you guys later bye